Well, hello, friends. It is a beautiful sunny day. It is still early spring, but you know what? It's that time of year where I'm itching to get outside. So even though I can't bring out my plants from the plant room, even though I cannot plant a lot of my standard annuals or anything in containers, obviously, until May, it's time to maybe plant some early plantings because honestly, it just makes me happy. So this video is all about to do or not to do, let's call it. That's really the question, right? And that means, do you plant early spring annuals? So I live in zone 5B, and in early spring, we can have temperatures still go below freezing. We can have really cold nights. We can also have really warm, beautiful, sunny days like we're having now, other than a little bit of a breezy kind of wind today. So it kind of is sometimes really not worth it to plant anything before May, before our last frost date. But then there are those moments where you wanna look out a window and just see something blooming and something pretty, especially get your hands dirty on a nice day like this. So I'm gonna plant a few things in some container, in mostly one container, and I'm gonna show you my method for it because to make myself feel better about buying any early plants, I wanna know I can use them longer and or use them in the ground as perennials later on, and that's what I'm gonna be doing. So we're gonna talk about that. We might do a little bit of fertilizing. You know. It's early enough in the garden season, we still have lots of time. So I feel this is the time of year where you can really expand your limits and just plan on all the different things you wanna do. In my mind, I'm gonna do it all, will I? Maybe not, but we can at least dream and think about it all and just have a little bit of fun along the way. So we're really talking up here, right under my kitchen window. I have a big container that I put a large agave in and I can see it from my kitchen windows. You also see it if you come to the front door, along this path, if you park here, you see it. So that's where I'm gonna kind of focus on right now. You can see we're early enough in the year, I have a few different um, containers of seedlings that like these are my coal crops that are going out during kind of nice sunny days and they're getting just small amounts of sunlight but more every few days to harden them off. So this is my broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, my lettuce is sitting outside right now, my heads of lettuce. And this is what I do just to make sure it doesn't get too much sun. So. I'll, like right now, this is getting probably just about an hour of sun before I put it back into shade. So I'll put it right behind this potted rosemary and a bay plant that I'm letting have some sun to that were in the garage. But what we're focusing on right now is this container and all of these beautiful plants. So to make myself feel like a container is more worthwhile or like I'm getting really, it's good money and use out of it, I use plants that I can use later on. So we're of course gonna use some hellebores. I love them. This is the Frost Kiss Peppa's Purple Linton Rose variety. You know, I planted a couple of these last year and I put them in the ground and they're doing beautiful this year and blooming really well. So as you know, Hellebores, Linton Rose, they pop out really early. They're kind of a late winter, early spring bloomer. So I put this in a container right now while they're blooming, they look really pretty. Then I can plant them in the ground here in about a month or a little over when I wanna put my main plants in the container for you know the whole summer. Same with some grass. I'm gonna add just some simple grass to it and then some just pansies because why not? That yellow pansy, at first I thought it was too stark, but if you look at the center, right there of the flower, there's yellow in it. I think it will look really good together. So I'm coming on with all the things I'm gonna use for this, which really is pretty simple, but this container has some soil left in it from last year. That never scares me. I kind of will sometimes can switch the container out completely, but year to year, I'll maybe take half of it out, add some fresh potting soil, just to make sure I have some nutrients back in there. But right now, since it's just like a planting that's only gonna be in here probably about a month, maybe about a month and a half, I will leave the soil in as is and just add a little bit more. So always use the Spoma all-purpose gardening soil, the potting soil. That's the, you know, the true simple thing about gardening is just to make sure you use the right product for the right area. So potting soil is designed for pots because it has good drainage, good aeration. It holds onto moisture as needed, but also releases it as needed. So making sure I just top that off. But then whenever I'm doing a new planting like this, I'll always add in a little bit of biotone. You know, these roots aren't gonna get fully set. They're just gonna be in here for a little bit and then they're gonna move on when I pot them in the soil later on, like right into the ground. But I'm also going to, since we're doing pansies and hellebore that bloom, I'm gonna do some flower tone. I think it just adds, so usually something like a flower tone, which is what I'm using a spoma again, it's going to help the blooms just do better, have more blooms, because usually it should have higher phosphate. That middle number, there's always three numbers on a fertilizer. 
and that's gonna promote more blooms. So I'm gonna just stir that in. You don't have to go too deep because none of these roots are gonna be deep. Now I'm gonna really pack these in here because I want it to feel full for spring. And that's the whole point. Now this one, as you can see, its roots are really coming out the bottom. I wanna make sure I break those off. Don't feel bad about that and take them right out of the pot. But look how tight these are. It is not bad to just open those up a little bit. That actually encourages their root growth to go outward, which is what you want so they can really soak in that water. So do you see how much now I actually broke those up? I'm not gonna tear all those off, but I wanna break it up because they're so tight. And I think that can always be really detrimental actually. If you're planting something in the soil, like in the ground or in a container, having too tight a roots, because you know, these can sometimes sit in the containers in the facility for a long time and they grow really strong roots, which is great but then they can be really hard for them to take on water as needed because they're so tight that they don't soak it in as needed. So I always will get in there, rip up that root ball, and I'm aggressive with it. I'll admit that, I'm really aggressive. Look how, look how I'm really breaking that up because you don't want these to encircle themselves and then start choking themselves out, which is really what they can do, see? So we're gonna put three of these right into the center and you know what, a few of these leaves are getting a little droopy, so if they don't stay up, I might just cut them off because I don't really like how they're gonna look. So don't feel bad about that. But you can see, if you put three of these big plants in the center, how nice and full that's really gonna make it look. And then I make sure that I buy a number of plants that I'm gonna want later on. So I actually have a couple more of these, so when I put them in the ground, I can have as many as I know I want the look of in the ground. So I might put a couple others in other pots. But right into the center, we have now height. We have color, we have instant blooms, and that's really the point. I'm potting up now the last of the grass here, which is a sedge. It's a variegated Japanese sedge. And I like it because I wanna use them then in the ground later on. Um, these can, they take like partial to full sun, but they do kind of have a pickiness to me on moisture. They take slightly, to, I have found more moisture than a lot of other grasses. So I have to be a little careful where I put them. So I try to put them always in, when I plant them in the soil later on, a little bit of afternoon shade, because I think they do better. But I think in containers too, they're just beautiful. They really add, so I actually thought I may keep these here, even with the agave I put in, and I may just keep them all season in here. We'll see. I just really like the color and the variegation they add. So I'm gonna also put in the last two little pansies here, which that yellow color works well with the grasses, it works well with the hellebores, and they grow in pretty quickly. So even though they look pretty small now, because I got like a six pack, or was it a, might have been a nine pack, I'm not sure. Actually, I think it was a 12 pack. <laughs> I got a 12 pack of them. And so they were a little bit smaller, but they sure look nice and healthy and they'll grow in here pretty quickly. So soon enough, all those pansies will start mounding up. We have the grasses here that will fill in a little bit and start coming over, which you can see it already is. And then we have some blooms right in the center. Now, the one thing I do to be careful of, you've probably noticed, I live in a really open area and it can be really windy. And that wind can come from the south, which is right behind me. So it could really hit against these. Usually it's slightly protected here that I'm not too worried. If it gets bad enough, sometimes I'll put a couple bamboo stakes in here, just tie these around if I need to, just so they stay looking nice for this month while I'm enjoying them. So you can see from a distance, and if we go up to it, how full it is. That's how I would do an early spring container. Now, I haven't watered it yet or gotten the excess soil off. But you can see, when you pack one full, it's only gonna be for about a month to a month and a half. So you don't have to worry about them overcrowding because they're gonna be moved later on, especially all the hellebores and the pansies. When it gets really warm here, if I wanna keep pansies, I put them in a little bit more shade. This really gets some full sun in the hot summer. So right now, I'm gonna enjoy all those blooms. I'm gonna enjoy the grasses growing in. But I wanna talk a little bit about fertilizing all the boxwood that are sitting around here. You know, we, we love boxwood. They're really, you know, they're kind of everywhere. People see boxwood everywhere. The one downfall of them right now is some of them have box blight in certain areas. And that's something that I don't deal with, but it's something to really think about if you're thinking about putting in boxwood. They also take a decent amount of water just because if you wanna keep up their healthy growth, they can take quite a bit of water. So that's another thing to think about. But since I already have all these, I wanna keep them as healthy and as happy as I can. So I don't do a lot to them, but I do fertilize them every year. 
This area gets a lot of leaves in the winter, and now I've removed quite a few of them just so it's not such a thick layer, but a few of the leaves I do leave. You can see there are some pockets of leaves down here, and that's because, well, leaves are wonderful compost. I don't want them so thick that they suffocate out anything, but I will be adding a new layer of just hardwood mulch on this this year. It's mostly gone right now. You see a lot of bare soil. I really let my mulch degrade into the soil before I just keep adding mulch every year. I don't want too thick or piled on mulch because that can create areas that harbor moisture, pests. It can give you that mildew mulch if it gets packed together. So I let my mulch really start working into the soil, which is what it should do. And this year I will top dress it, but those leaves can be underneath the mulch and add a great kind of layer of natural compost over time. But what I am gonna do now is take plant tone. So when it comes to boxwood, they are one of the evergreens along with arborvitae that do not need acidic fertilizer. They're not an acid loving evergreen. A lot of evergreens are, but for boxwood and for arborvitae, I just use plant tone and you go by the size of the boxwood. So usually it's the drip line, which means like the outside most area of that boxwood, you can measure across it. And usually if it's about three feet, I think it's a cup for every foot. When it gets over that three foot wide mark, then you start upping that a little bit and I think you double the amount. But it usually says on the bag itself. Now you are gonna notice there's some bronzing on it and there's some yellowing. Any of the tips that are really bright yellow, they can just be either trimmed off, plucked off. It's still a little early in the year, so I usually wait until we're closer to May to do that. The bronze colored areas that you see in some of the boxwood, they will still green up. They're coming out of their winter kind of dormancy. They will most likely green up. The bright yellow doesn't, but that bronze color does. So what I do anymore with the plant tone, you wanna put it around that drip line and let it work into the soil. Anymore, I'm able to eyeball most of it, I'll admit. You can measure it out too, but I will go around. Since these are so tightly together, I just go around and start putting it in all around the boxwood. And then I have a small rake here. I'm gonna rake it in. Once I have all that fertilizer added, which what I love by the way about Plantone, it's organic, it's not strong, it's not synthetic. You're not gonna be burning anything or hurting anything. And that's the real important part here but I take a nice rake and this is a small landscape rake so it can work in around them easier. And I just lightly rake it in just so it starts loosening up that top crust of soil or mulch. If there's mulch here, I will put it on top of the mulch and I will work it in with the rake just so it gets closer to that soil level. We're supposed to be getting rain in the next couple days. That to me is the best time to do it because that rain can start doing the work for you and taking it down into the soil and into the roots. What I really like about plant tone too, it is good for anything else that's around these plants or it won't hurt anything is really the big thing. You know, I have some red leaf macadinia here. I have some various hellebore back there that are planted in the soil, some bulbs that are planted in the soil. There's some sun king aurelia that's planted there. Plant tone is really a great all purpose one. Not only is it good for boxwood and arborvitae, it's gonna be good for everything overall. And I really consider a lot of it like a good compost where it's gonna add great nutrients and great kind of micronutrients to the soil without giving something synthetic that's just gonna give a jolt to the plants. It gives a nice, long, healthy soil and feeding to the plants kind of over the whole growing year. And that's what I really like about it. So I have it worked in here. I have more of course to do, but I thought we'd go talk about one difference, which is how I fertilize all my hydrangea. So when it comes to hydrangeas, they are acid loving. So all my hydrangeas are always just fed with Hollytone, which is an acid or four acid loving plants fertilizer. And it's going to help promote not only more blooms, better root growth, just overall health for that plant. Now again, I don't like to add synthetic fertilizers because what a lot of times a synthetic will do, which is maybe those all purpose ones you see in a lot of stores, is it gives a boost for that season or for a short time. So when you add that on, it kind of jumpstarts something, maybe really pushes out new growth, but it doesn't always focus on the overall health of the plant and of the soil. Things like the tone lines that I use with Espoma, Holly Tone, the plant tone, they help that overall health of the soil. And isn't that the whole point of gardening? To help the longevity of your soil, which will in turn help all your plants be healthier. 
I think it is. So this is really the same ratio as that plant tome. You want to measure the size of your plant. So in that case, again, the drip line is from one side to the other. That's why it's really easiest to do these before they really push out all their leaves because you can really see that overall size much better. These are probably right now about three foot across, which is right at that threshold where I'll add three cups of this holly tone around each plant. Once they get beyond that, if I want to fertilize full strength, I can double that amount, or you can just start adding some fertilizer. All fertilizer, like these tones, is going to help overall. It's organic. So adding anything is going to be good, but it's really the same process as what I was doing. I'm sprinkling it around, and again, why I like to do it when there's no leaves, do you see how it just falls through the plant and it goes right to the soil? That's the important part. So once I do this, I will rake it slightly, but you can see this is my line of limelight hydrangeas. And once I get them fertilized, we can talk a little bit about my method for pruning or not pruning yet, and a little bit of my care for all these hydrangeas. You can see it really doesn't take that long. I have 18 of these limelights here in a row. I sprinkle it on. I don't worry too much about doing it perfectly. The reason we talk about drip line and the reason I say you measure at the drip line and you sprinkle at the drip line is because usually or oftentimes the overall drip line, meaning one side of the plant to the other straight down, generally that's where those roots are active and really starting to grow out. So the larger the plant grows, the larger those roots grow. So if you sprinkle fertilizer at that drip line, it's hopefully working down to where those active roots are that are really gonna use that fertilizer and have the good growth. So that's why we sprinkle it there. And then you can see I just went in really quickly and roughly with a rake, raked it in slightly. So when looking at these hydrangeas, these are paniculata, panicle hydrangeas, meaning they have more of a cone-shaped flower, limelights do. These have been in now, this will be their fourth season, I believe, growing. And you can see they're getting to about that good four foot mark. Now, the first few years, they can be somewhat wimpier in their growth. But if you look now, especially when they're dormant here, you see a lot of that center growth is straight up and it's creating very strong center stems. And that's really important because as these grow eight to 10 foot tall, and I want that full growth out here, these are really going to need that support to hold up those blooms. So if I would trim them all back now, and they do bloom on new and old wood, so they would bloom, the problem is that new growth would be really weak. So what I wanna do now is keep them about four foot every year, and once they grow beyond this point, I will trim it back to the four foot, but always leaving these original four foot stems so they have very strong, solid growth to begin with, and I'm not chopping that back. Otherwise, new growth is always softer, it's always more weak, and it can move around the wind. Now, you're probably gonna notice right here what happened. I wasn't going to show that, but let's just talk about it. About two years ago, we had very erratic winter. Actually, we have erratic winters now every year, but it was a warm and cold winter. And on a lot of arborvitae, it created major dieback. This was my worst one. Slowly new growth now is coming out. I trimmed out all the dead that year. It is coming. So I will actually put some plant tone on these, um, especially the ones that look like that. I did it last year too, but it's kind of shocking in two years since then, that one there had a very similar dead spot. It's really growing in. So this is the last one to really push out some growth, but it finally is now um, from the center and it will fill in. So let's not worry about that. But this is now all these hydrangeas. And like I said, the important part with any tall hydrangea is that good growth. When they have heavy blooms, that, grow, that, that bloom needs support. And that's gonna come from that central, really sturdy growth. So don't just trim everything back really deeply. Now, if you're really trying to control the growth of these, like I want these to get eight to 10 foot tall. So I'm gonna keep that four foot growth. If you're wanting to keep yours more around, say four to six foot, you could trim them back to that three foot to four foot every year and try to control the growth more that way. Eventually, you just have to make sure you plant the right plant in the right area. So limelights overall are gonna to wanna to get big and tall and wide. You need to put them in the area they can. You can choose any more other varieties, little limes, bobo hydrangea. Those have a similar look, but will stay much smaller. So that's important to know. Behind me, by the way, is that prairie I, I started planting last year. And I'm really excited to see how it starts growing in this year. I'm hoping for more flowers in it. It can take a while for them to establish. So I think I might add some more wildflower seed this year too, but the grass is starting getting really established last year. So I'm really hoping for it. Okay, friends, that is what I got done today. Planted a beautiful planter. 
to me that I can use later on in the ground. That's how I try to think of all planters. I don't do lots of annuals, and when I do, I try to use them very sporadically, just for economical reasons. But also, I wanna have plants that I can plant in the soil and be perennials then later on. There's no point to me in wasting a planter to throw it all out. So we planted that, I've started fertilizing boxwood and hydrangeas right before they're gonna really push out all their buds. It's the perfect time. And they're gonna have lots of growth now for the coming season. So keep checking back soon enough. We're gonna start planting vegetables in the garden. We're gonna be planting perennials. I have lots of new areas like this new pathway that's gonna be coming that happened. Why am I showing you? I don't know, but I'm going to. That happens to be uh, right in front of me. So if you remember last year, we added this pathway with a big perennial bed. That path is getting extended this year all the way behind me along these uh, Woodward Arborvitae. New bed, new area. It's exciting, right? So keep checking back.